Back to when you were a kid, were you a big picture fan growing up? Oh yeah, yeah. My mother was a picture fan, and uh, my dad used to wear nights a lot. He was a machinist, and uh, so at least once a week, we would. Uh, Mom would say, "Okay, we're going to the movies," and, and she she just was enamored with all the all the wonderful. I saw kind of all the. Sign of the Cross with Frederick March and Claudette Colbert and oh, all the Laurel, Laurel and Hardy was my, I never missed a Laurel and Hardy picture, ever. And so I, I um, all of that, I guess, uh, started to foment, and this, I was about eight years old, and oh no, about seven, six or seven. And uh, all of that, I think, started to pot boil, you know. My father was a very good, very fine athlete and a dancer. I'm a ballroom dancer and uh, and a roller skater, he, and he, uh, he also had done considerable acrobatic work in at the German Turnerverein in Chicago when he was a young man. So when we moved to Santa Monica, uh, Dad loved the beach. He loved the sand and and the water and everything. So uh, we'd go down there and he'd start teaching me just you know, elementary acrobatics, you know. Handsprings and and flips and one thing and another, which I I took to very easily because uh, uh, the apple didn't fall too far from the tree in that respect. Anyway, um, then then I got in, in school. I got involved in swimming and, and track and all similar related uh, uh, body functions. You know? so uh, when I. Uh, when I was 12 years old, I went to the Wilshire Theater in Santa Monica, a matinee, which is the usual Saturday afternoon fair, and uh, there was a picture there called Flying Down to Rio with Fred Astaire, his first film. Well, that did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, that was uh, right, right away I wanted to take dancing lessons and the whole thing. So that's where it started. What was your, your first professional job uh, in show business? My first professional job was uh, when I was in high school. Well, I, I did when I went to dancing school. Uh, I had a partner, and we used to do you know opening of markets, uh, women's clubs, <laughs> things like that, veterans' homes on Sunday nights, you know, things like that, which is all good, you know, professional experience. But we never got paid anything for that. But when I, uh, during my high school, uh, I stopped where I was taking uh, the Albright Studios and I went to Fancy DeMarco School in Hollywood, which is a big professional school. Uh, um, Rita, Rita Consino, Rita Hayworth, was assisting her father uh, in Spanish dancing there, and Judy Garland was around, and, and uh, Ann Miller was around, and you know. It was a, and uh, what they had was, Fashion Marco owned the Paramount Theater downtown, and at that time, the Paramount Theater was tantamount to uh, uh, the Radio City Music Hall here. They had the Fanchonettes, and they had a program of a movie and a stage show, which was very popular in those days. So that they could give their students uh, experience every Christmas, Easter, and summer, two weeks would be taken over by the, the, the junior fashion of uh, Fanchon and Marco Review. And uh, so my first job was in the Juvenile Review with Fanchon and Marco, $15 a week. <laughs> that, was, that was my first professional experience. And you, also, you worked with Sonia Henney. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I started with, uh, when I was 18 years old, well I graduated, when I graduated from Santa Monica High School, uh, we had, or they still have I think, a thing called Senior Ditch Day, which is, is exactly what it is. The, the senior class gets together to decide where they're going to go on, 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 on Ditch Day. And it's usually a, you know entire group activity. This particular year they decided to go to the Polar Palace in, in uh, Hollywood. And uh, 
So at noon, every, the entire class just walked out of class, you know, and, <laughs> and that was a, a kind of a fun event. So I, I, I borrowed a pair of skates from um, my assistant yell leader and uh, went up there and I had a ball. I just had <laughs> such fun. I, I was soaking wet and I was cut and bruised and everything else. I kept falling all the time. but. I, God, it was so wonderful. I really, uh, I had found something totally different from anything I'd ever done before. So when I graduated, I got a job uh, in a cafeteria in Santa Monica, which only required my services from five in the afternoon till eight at night. And uh, I spent my entire $18 a week on, on going up to the Polar Palace at night and skating. I started skating every single night. Now the guy who managed the Polar Palace named Bert Clark, a little guy about this big, a hockey player, ex-hockey player from Canada, he was Sonia's technical advisor on our film and, uh, and, and the show. Well, I improved very rapidly because I, I really w was working at it. I didn't take any lessons or anything else. I just kept going, you know. And Bert kept watching me all the time and, and uh, came now, I, I graduated in February, so this was getting through the summer, getting into like August. And I'd been skating about three months. And Bert said, we're having auditions for the Sonia Henny Hollywood Ice Review. Would you like to try out? I said, sure. So I auditioned and I got a job in the chorus. And the following year, I did I did specialty work, and so I just kept going with that for about uh, three years, and then um, I did two films with her in the chorus. You Which know. pictures? Uh, Second fiddle with uh, Tyrone Power, and everything happens at night. I don't know who was in that, and uh, then uh, I found a little partner and we were the first exponents of Jitterbug on Ice. We developed a, a whole routine with, with that and uh, um, a show was put together not by Sonia but uh, uh, the, the Ambassador Hotel. They have what they call a muck ice show, artificial, artificial ice. It's like ro a, a form of rosin that they pour over and, and a blade will stick into it, noisy as the Dickens, you know, and hard. You, you really got it. You don't glide too well, but you can do almost everything you would do on ice. In, in you know, uh, a little slower. So uh, my partner and I got with that show, and uh, it was uh, we were there about six weeks at the Ambassador Hotel. It was great fun, and uh, then Sonia and her producer, then Arthur Wirtz from Chicago. He produced all her shows. He, he owned the uh, Chicago Stadium at the time. He made a deal to uh, convert the Center Theater here in New York, it's not there anymore, uh, to a nice stage. And they took out about, I don't know, three, four hundred seats and extended the stage out to make a huge ice surface. I think the original capacity was something like 3,000, 3,500. It was just below uh, the, the capacity of the Radio City Music Hall. And they cut it down to about 3,000 to m allow for the ice stage. Catherine Littlefield was the choreographer. And um, Skippy Baxter, Hetty Stenoff, uh, uh, people I'm sure you would never, n never know, but they were all famous skaters at the time in the amateur field. Uh, and we had, at first, we had Joe Cook and his contraptions, you know, the Rube Goldberg <laughs> contraptions that he always did. And we opened, uh, and um, it was a tremendous failure at first because they tried to do too many things. I mean, they tried to do vaudeville, uh, non-skating vaudeville, and 